What's up everybody, Joe Brown here. This is the Heresy Financial Show and uh, the Federal Reserve just released their minutes and so I am uh, recording this video before uh, the actual press conference is completed here. Just wanna get the info out basically about what they said as soon as possible. The biggest deal here is that the Federal Reserve signaled it's gonna be reducing its holdings at a maximum pace of $95 billion per month. Now, if you remember, after the initial spike uh, in 2020, when they added a bunch to their balance sheet all at once, they were adding $120 billion to their balance sheet every single month, just about. Um, now they're saying they're gonna run it off at a maximum of $95 billion a month. So yesterday, uh, Brainard came out and said, that uh, they were going to uh, try and do this rapidly. Now, in my opinion, doing it slower than their uh, you know, regular monthly pace following the spike does not count as rapidly to me, but maybe it does to them. And keep in mind, this is maximum. And so I know that they were buying a, um, a minimum of 120 billion, was it a minimum? $120 billion, or maybe it's maximum, I can't remember. Um, but right now they are selling a maximum. So they don't have to sell anything during a given month that they don't want to. We'll have to wait and see how this actually plays out. Um, what's the breakdown though? Because they have two things on their balance sheet. They have treasuries and uh, they also have mortgage backed securities. And so the uh, treasuries portion of what they're gonna sell will be a maximum of $60 billion per month of treasuries. And then the remainder, the $35 billion remainder will be mortgage-backed securities. Um, and let's see, uh, in 2017 through 2019, they were selling $50 billion a month of mortgage-backed securities. And so uh, they are gonna be selling less uh, of mortgage-backed securities right now than they were back then. Now keep in mind, what happened to the economy the last time the Federal Reserve was selling assets off of its balance sheet? It was, uh, for, for years, they did nothing. Their balance sheet was flat, and then they started to slowly sell assets off of their balance sheet, and the economy started to suffer. Markets started to suffer. It got to a point at the end of 2018 that the markets couldn't handle it, and so they reversed course on their rate uh, increases, and then in uh, 2019, in September, just nine months later after they had to halt their rate hikes, they had to uh, completely reverse QE and or reverse QT and go back into QE. That was the repo market blew up. So the economy, by many measures, was stronger then than it is now because um, the way that we know that is that uh, it blew up and then they didn't allow the resolution of that blow up to happen. When you have an economy that has a false boom, the bust is the cure for the malinvestment. The recession is the cure for the misallocation of resources. That's what happens. If you're going to have an economy that has booms and busts because of a credit cycle, because of a false expansion of the money supply built on uh, a, an a artificial expansion of credit and the money supply, you are going to have a cycle of booms and busts. It's not a, it's not a business cycle, it's a credit cycle, it's a debt cycle. Um, with a, uh, with a um, money supply that is fixed, even if it was a fixed rate of growth, but a money supply that is fixed completely, um, and uh, uh, fractional reserve banking um, being outlawed because it's technically fraud uh, to say on deposits can be redeemed on demand, um, but not actually having those deposits on hand, um, and only being to able to lend out of existing the existing pool of savings um, instead of lending money into existence. Um, absent that, you wouldn't have the boom bust cycle. You would have isolated examples uh, and all distributed pretty evenly throughout the economy of success and failure, but you wouldn't have systemic booms and busts. That is a result of uh, fractional reserve banking, of an expansionary monetary supply, of uh, the entire credit system that we have. Now, when you don't allow that bust to happen, you don't fix the economy. All you do is make those problems bigger. It's like taking morphine when you realize that you have uh, a tumor to deal with the pain. It's like taking Novocaine to deal with a uh, tooth uh, um, cavity. It doesn't solve the problem. All it does is temporarily puts the uh, symptoms uh, at bay and makes you be able to ignore the symptoms. And so that's what they were doing 
And uh, w when they bailed out the economy, when they stopped um, allowing the recession, the bust to take place, because um, because they it, it was going to crop up, it was going to uh, bust out, and it was going to hurt the economy and cause a big crash. And so they didn't allow that to happen. And now what they're saying is um, they're saying that the economy is strong enough to start uh, dwindling their balance sheet. It's only a worse economy than it was before. We didn't deal with any of the problems. All we did was take a ton of morphine, a ton of painkillers, a ton of Novocaine economically in order to reduce the symptoms. All those problems are still there and arguably much larger now that we have even more misallocation of resources and um, uh, mistakes in economic calculation as a result of the uh, misinformation of pricing uh, that was uh, infiltrated the uh, economy as a result of the money printing. That's that's the that's the result of expanding the monetary supply, especially so rapidly. So the economy is not near as strong as it was a couple of years ago. It has all the same problems, plus arguably many more problems. And they're saying they're going to be able to reduce their balance sheet by uh, what was it again, ninety five billion dollars a month? No chance. They will start. Make no mistake. They will start. I don't know if they'll start to that full capacity. I think they said they're going to ease into it. Um, yeah, the caps could be phased in over three months or a bit longer. So they're going to start in May. Um, they're probably not going to hit the max, but they're going to they're going to ease into it. And their plan is by three months after May, so by August or September, they'll be hitting that ninety five billion dollars a month of selling off their uh, balance sheet. And uh, I don't think they're going to be able to sustain it. They're going to be able to start, but at some point, this is going to cause such major problems, especially if we see the inflation numbers uh, continue. Now, my expectation, this is very different than almost anybody I've talked to, my expectation is that the inflation numbers will go down a bit. I think we're going we're gonna to see 6%, maybe even 5% towards the end, and it's not a result of their tightening. It's a result of the drop in the growth of the money supply over 2021 because the money supply growth dropped extremely quickly in 2021. There's a lot of spending that was planned that didn't actually happen, and the deficit was reduced compared to 2020. Again, not because of, uh, not because of uh, the political uh, leaders, the administration's desires, just because of political gridlock. They couldn't get any spending through. So I think as a result of that, we're going to see, uh, you know, it takes time for monetary and fiscal policy to work its way throughout an economy. We'll see the inflation numbers slow down. And um, they're going to take a victory lap and something's going to crack, something's going to crash, something's going to bust, some big G-sib in Europe or something like that is going to start to fall over. And they're going to say, hey, we've got a handle on inflation now. As you can see, inflation numbers have been coming down, even though it won't have anything to do with what they're doing over the, the at, at that point, the last couple of months. It won't have anything to do with the rates or the uh, selling assets off their balance sheet. So they're going to say, now we have room to rescue the economy again and they'll reverse course. And uh, they're basically doing a rug pull out from underneath the economy and they're going to reverse course. And when they start to buy assets again and start to drop rates again, it's not going to have the intended effect because there's all this built up deflationary pressure and they're going to have to do much, much, much more than that. It's not going to have any impact. So we'll see as of right now, they are planning on selling assets off their balance sheet. We'll see what effect that has on inflation, if any. I don't think it will, but it is almost certain it'll have some major effects that are unexpected um, for uh, major players around the world, emerging markets, different currencies, um, and uh, uh, weak balance sheets of especially the banks in Europe. And we're, they're going to cause some problems, so we shall see. But it doesn't look like they can keep this game going for long. Uh, I expect by the end of the year some major things to start to break before they overcorrect then and tip us over into risking hyperinflation. Uh, as always, really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.